After creating those war types, now it's time to place them. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to create the two war sections. The first war section is going to be the pilaster, and uh, it's going to be placed at intersection of grid line A and 1. The second section of war is actually going to be the um, dollar tree right above the storefront between grid line 6 and 7. To place the pilasters, let's take a look at our uh, plan grid join page A1. Point one, and you'll find out this corner here it shows the length for the front and the um, side plaster above 5 feet. We can also go to the um, detail view on page, uh, page A4.0 and look at detail, detail view D1. So this detail view gives a lot of great information for the field crew to uh, frame the plaster, uh, including those um, metal studs and uh, the brick veneer as well as the CMU blocks. Okay, and however, it does not provide any new dimensions. It does, however, tell you that this um, front pilaster wall starts at the edge of the current wall here, and uh, also another um, implicit uh, information you can find from here is actually the um, CMU block of the side pilaster wall has to be actually aligned with the side CMU wall itself. Okay, now. The next page I want you to look at is actually A2.0. Okay, on this page you will find the height of the pilaster was going to be between finish floor 00, zero all the way goes up to top of parapet at 21.4. That tells you the height of the um, pilaster wall. The next one I want you to look at is actually a wall section view. So look at a C1 detail view uh, um, at, on page um, A3.0. The information I want you to get from here is actually this dimension, 6 inch. This 6 inch designates the distance between grid line A and the interior face of the second layer of metal studs of the pilaster. Remember, we had two layers of metal studs here and here of the pilaster wall. And the 6 inch is the distance between the grid line A and the interior face of the second layer of metal studs. The last page I want you to look at is going to be uh, S join A on uh, 1.1. Here, very interesting, okay, you see the grid line AA and it actually aligns with the exterior face of the pilaster and that's actually very important. Okay, this dimension, will, this reference line is going to help us to locate the pilaster more perfectly. So with all the information, now we are uh, going to be able to place the pilaster. So go to our architecture tab and select the wall command on the building panel and uh, choose the uh, wall type to be exterior pilaster and adjust your base constraints to be 00, zero and the top constraints to be 21.4. Okay, now before we get started, we actually want to make sure that our location line will be set as the finish face exterior because you want to use this grid line AA as a reference. Okay, so you also should have those green model lines we used previously when we actually placed the current wall. So we can start our um, um, plaster foam, the edge of the curtain wall itself, and draw down a little bit until you reach the grid line AA. Now move your mouse to your left and uh, type 5 on your keyboard because it's 5 feet long. And now here, before we keep going, you are supposed to um, hit the escape key on your keyboard once so you can change the wall type to be side pilaster. Then you start from where you stopped one step ago and click here and move your mouse up and hit a 5 again because it's also 5 feet long. Now click on modify or hit escape key twice to create the uh, wall command. Okay, now at this moment let's do some validation. First thing I want you to validate is actually the distance between grid line A and the second layer of the metal stars interior face. See if it's actually 6 inch. Okay, so let's go to our annotate tab and click on aligned. Now, you know to actually pick up the face of the metal stars, we have to change our um, preference to be the face of core. Okay, so it's going to be this line. Then we're going to pick up that grid line A and see here it's 6 inch, which is perfect. Okay, then lengthwise of the plaster wall length, we need to pick up the face of the water cell. So we do this and this. It's actually five foot. Perfect. And for the front plaster wall, face of the wall, it's five foot as well. So it's perfectly lined up. Now, the only issue we see here is actually the CMU blocks of the plaster wall is not 
are not aligned with the uh, CMU uh, foundation and uh, side wall. Okay, so that's a problem. So what we're gonna do is gonna align this wall. Okay, align the semi blocks of the plaster with the foundation wall as well as the side semi wall. To do this, let's go to our modify pan uh, tab, modify panel, the first icon which is called align. You can also type A L on your keyboard. A L. So in order to pick up the face of the core, obviously, and we're actually supposed to make the prefer preference to be face of core. Let's pick up that. Okay. Um, foundation wall first, then click on that face of the uh, CMU blocks of the plaster. So that will move the wall, the plaster slightly to the right. Okay, so however, the downside of this is actually now your front plaster was no longer four, uh, 5 foot, instead it's a 4 foot and 11 and 5 eighth inch. Okay, so but this is what it is. Um, this is one of the things that this set of joints uh, didn't do well in terms of your consistency. In the field, 3 eighth inch is a very um, tricky number because it's not accurate. But 3 eighth inch sometimes is actually um, you know, accept it on the on the field. So in this case, we just leave the way it is, and that's gonna be our pilaster uh, wall. Okay. Now, let's move our uh, to the um, st star tree wall right above the storefront between grid line six and seven. You know, to place that wall, let's take a look at our um, elevation view again. Look at page eight point zero, and this is the wall we're gonna place. Okay. So this wall actually. Alright, it's between grid line six and seven, and its topmost point is actually twenty-eight foot, 20, uh, eight inches. Okay, then, okay, what we need to figure out is actually the arc top, right? It is an arc instead of like regular flat line. So how would you do this? We'll be, we're going to be uh, um, exploring that in just a minute. So let's take a look at a sector view detail. Okay, so this B one. Now. This wall is actually starting at nine foot eight inch because the storefront is um, that height is actually nine foot eight inches. Okay. And another thing I want to recognize here is also the location of the um, exterior uh, ifs wall because this is actually a one and a half inch ifs wall. Okay. So here you have another six inch which is between the grid line and uh, the um, interface of the metal stats. So this six inch is also important for us. Okay. So now let's go ahead and place this um, Dollar Tree section wall and wall section, and then we're gonna adjust that top profile in just a minute. So go back to our model, and because we are actually going to create a wall between uh, nine foot eight inch above ground to all the way to twenty eight eight, and we do not have a level that is nine foot. Um, you know, uh, eight inch. So what we're gonna do is gonna go to the joist bearing 14 eighth, this view here, because uh, that way you can actually see the wood itself. Okay. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and go to our architecture tab again, wall combine again. Okay. And uh, what we're gonna do is select the wall, which is the exterior storefront edifice we customized the wall a moment ago. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is change the base constraints offset to minus five foot because at this moment, you are at um, 14 foot 8 inches tall, and uh, you start the you, the wall actually starts at 9 foot 8 inches. So we need to set up a minus 5 foot value. Then the wall top constraint is going to be all the way go up to 28 a, okay, and uh, there was no top offsets. All right. So now the other thing is uh, our location line. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use my core cool face interior because that's the back of the metal studs. And uh, we're going to use an offset value, okay, because it's going to be six inches away from the grid line A. So, what this does is when my mouse is actually click on grid line A, the wall will be drawn six inches away from it, which is perfect, okay. So, in this case, what I'm going to do is draw a wall from seven to six, okay. Again, while we're drawing the wall from seven to six, because we have to draw it clockwise, okay, and so that way the um, um, face of the wall would not be set out. Okay, so we select our intersection A7 first, and as you see here, okay, it's the wall be placed six inches away from the grid line A, and go to A6. Okay, then click on modify. Let's go to our 3D view and take a look at this section of wall. Now that's the wall. Now, if you want to examine, okay, it's top most <coughs> elevation. What you can do is go to your annotate.
and the tab and click on the spot elevation and you can check that okay it's 20a eighth inch okay click on modify <clears throat> now our job is actually how do you turn this wall into the wall it looks like in the join so it's ha it has actually a arc top in this case what we have to do is click on the wall itself and on the modify under modify tab we have this mode panel and let's click on edit profile the edit profile will allow you to modify the existing profile. We call those pin clamps as a profile of the walls. Okay, you have top, bottom, and two side um, profiles for the wall. So, what I want you to do is click on that little cube here, navigation cube, click on front, and we are going to draw an arc, okay, an arc between this point and that point with the radius as indicated on the drawing here says 69 foot 9 3 quarters inch so that's going to be our radius for that arc so to draw arc we're going to choose the draw panel and click on the second button from the second row uh, the first button on the second row which is uh, using th start and radius methods to create an arc so choose this as the starting point and this one as the ending point and then move your mouse up and then type your radius into Oh, using your keyboard. So 69 spacebar 9 3 quarter. So that's how you input 69 foot 9 inch in the 3 quarter inch. Hit enter. So that will give you this arc here. However, remember that the topmost point is actually here. So we need, we need to lower the arc to this level. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and select that arc and click on the uh, modify panel and the move command. Okay, so I want you to move your mouse slightly to the center of the arc. You will see a pink triangle. That's the midpoint. Click on that point. Move your mouse straight down until you see another pink um, triangle, which is, designates the midpoint of the um, flat um, or the original uh, profile of that wall. And click on that. So that will give you this little half arc. Uh, half flat line here. So what I want you to do is select the arc itself and drag that little bootouts all the way. Just drag it and it should extend the arc until it reaches to the side profile of the wall. Now I want you to delete the top flat part and we're going to deal with this little part I'm pushing here. So it's very likely quite often you actually run into situations like this because you have some extra pink lines you need to trim out. So what you do, you can use something called the on the modify panel and then trim to corner. Okay, click on that command. So where do you click? We're gonna click the part that we wanna keep. In this case, the arc, we're gonna keep the whole arc. So anywhere, that's fine. For this straight, okay, the vertical edge here, we wanna save the uh, section that is below the arc. So we we'll click, our mouse is gonna click the lower part of the arc. So that way the upper part is gonna be trimmed out. And uh, so that's how you create an arc top of the wall okay so go ahead and cl uh, click on the green check mark and uh, you will get, receive an error message because the spot elevation is no longer applied because you have already trimmed that out part of the wall out so just go ahead and delete dimension now so this is your arc top wall the last question will actually be uh, how do i put a signage on the face of this um, wall here. So it's actually pretty easy to do. So first thing we want to do is actually to uh, go to our architecture tab okay, and you'll find on the model which is right in the middle on the model panel there is something called model text okay, click on that and you can just type dollar tree and click on OK. Now the problem however is you can't place your dollar tree right on the face because you are at 3D view, okay? And um, obviously, there's no accurate position. So how do we actually accurately place this dollar, sign, dollar tree signage on this specific surface of the wall? We can actually set, use the work plan command to set our work plan to be the face of the wall. So let's go ahead and do that. Click on the set, and uh, we're gonna choose the second option, pick a plane, and click on OK. Now, we're gonna choose this front face of the wall. You see that there's the face of the wall has been highlighted in the bluish color. Click on that. And then you can click on show the work plane. Now it tell you that your current work plane is uh, set at the surface of the wall here. So let's go back to our model text command and 
type dollar tree and click on OK and uh, you can use your navigation and actually just place it right there okay so now if you go to your front using the cube here you can zoom in a little bit and you see the dollar tree is right here as you see the dollar tree sign according to the drawing is actually italic so you can change its uh, italic and change the size of the fonts as well by going to this model and click on here and it says I'd like to my modify my existing text so click on edit type what I want you to do is go ahead and duplicate that okay because you always want to duplicate so let's say you want to have a two foot six inch um, aerial signage okay you can change that to 30 inch aerial and you can change the size to two foot six inch and you can make it bold and make it italic okay so that's gonna be your model text so in this case it becomes like that okay now not only the size of the signage but also you can assign a specific material to the signage at this moment so if we click on the signage here and it does not have a material okay it's a bad category what you can do is actually click on that by category thing and then click on that little box to bring you back to this material um, library which we have uh, introduced previously so you can search for uh, metal so you can try to see what kind of metal do you want to use okay you can use different um, colors whatever sometimes it even makes sense for you to choose the color uh, that really match the reality because in reality reality most of the time a dollar tree is a greenish color I have this aluminum anodized green if you do not that's fine we just want to, sh to give you uh, show you how it's actually being done so you will select this aluminum material and with a, a, a greenish color um, here and click on OK and now your dollar tree signage is going to be a grayish italic just like reality okay so that concludes our um, video for placing um, the walls exterior walls